Welcome to IAS Celebrations Pantra. What drives you to focus on movies that highlight issues of social importance? Thank you so much. Uh, it's such an honor to be here today. I wish I could be there in person and I wish I could meet everyone and I know that day will come soon. Um, I think I've always believed in emotional and candid storytelling and through every single one of the films that we make at Curly Street, the aim has always been for people to watch the film, pause for a moment and think to themselves, how can we be a part of this? How can we contribute? What difference can we make? And I think the aim um, of our films is to try and make people negotiate life uh, as more responsible and caring individuals. And our mission is really, you know, to cut through time and space um, and go beyond uh, right to where the audience is and go beyond their reality uh, and what's happening in their own lives and, and nudge that humanity within. And cinema has this unique ability to take hard facts and cold information and, and transform it into the poetry of survival. And that in itself is, is universally relatable. And I think that is what we want to do. And if we can do that, then true and positive change can begin there. You could address these issues through commercial movies too. Uh, why did you choose to be a documentary filmmaker? You know, I think to me, truth is very intimate and real stories are fascinating. And, and it is, you know, it, it, is, it is also about conflicts and it is about contradictions, but it is also about an understanding of the human connection and the human bond and the human being. And to me, I find that deeply, deeply moving. And it is that visceral connection of, you know, being in a situation that's real and being with people and watching a real moment unfold. To me, that's unmatched. And I think that's why I'm so, so deeply bound to documentaries. Wish we can have more such directors who think like you. Uh, you have made many movies covering various disabilities, Kushbu, uh, Indelible, Routing for, Rooting for Runa. What is your journey on disabilities? Um, I think growing up, I very rarely encountered someone with a disability. And as I've gone on in my life and in my career, I realized that a lot of it is almost always invisible. And the first true interaction and encounter I had was in high school, I had the opportunity to volunteer at a school uh, for special needs. And I think I was just completely blown away. I, I couldn't begin to imagine the extraordinary odds that they faced every single day and, and how a lot of these children were not empowered to go about basic daily living that we took for granted and that we continue to take for granted. And it is something that deeply irked me. I wanted to do something about it then and, and I just didn't know at the time, I was too young. And many years later, film pre presented me with that answer. And I really believe that some of the curiosity that we can create using art can be the first step to an inclusive society. And with every film we've made and every person's story that we have had the honor to be a part of, we found ourselves drawn so deeply and so in awe of every single thing they faced every day. And I think all we really wanted to do is put forward our experience with each family and each person with complex needs, just the way we experienced, experienced it out to the world. And, you know, 
a lot of people have asked us, uh, once you're done with the film, what happens? You know, do you move on to your next? And we always say, we don't move on from a story because every person becomes a part of our lives and us them. And now it's been over 15 years. And with every film we make, we take it into the next film because we've learned so much. And so we never move on, you know, they remain a part of every single thing that we do and will continue to do. Well, I watched uh, Rooting for Runa on Netflix. Uh, it touched my heart very deeply. Um, can you share, can you please share your journey uh, in the making of Rooting for Runa? That's a hard question, but I will try. Um, Rooting for Runa is about a little girl called Runa who was born in a small village uh, in Tripura, which is in the northeast of India. And she was born with this birth defect that caused her head uh, to swell to an unprecedented size. And you know, her parents, Abdul and Fatima, were told at the time nothing could be done. So they went home to their village and they waited for the inevitable. And you know, one day, um, a photograph of, of Runa went viral. And it triggered this incredible chain of events and she was finally flown to Delhi for treatment. And at the same time, um, I had just completed my first feature documentary, Indelible, which tells the stories of seven people with Down syndrome. And we were just done and I was going through uh, my news feed and I saw an article written by a friend that had broken a few hours ago. And in all the years that I have worked in complex needs, I had never encountered anything like this. And I think our thoughts at that moment was, how, how can this child have come to this stage? What is the family's plight? It was absolutely unbearable for us to, you know, even try and imagine what was going on. And so, we just decided we needed to be there, we needed to help her, we needed to tell the story, and we were on a flight to her. And the interesting thing that happened is amidst all the despair, there was this joy that Runa had been discovered, that she had been given this chance at life. And that meant that she was a symbol of hope, and she is, she continues to be a symbol of hope. Because if she got that chance, that means millions of children could have that very same chance. And in so many ways, birth defects is an invisible war. You don't see it, you very rarely hear of it. And suddenly, the whole world was talking about this little child. And it was so inspiring to see people from every corner, you know, coming forward saying, how can we help? And this was back in April 2013. And of course, you know, once the surgeries were successful and uh, the world moved on, we remained. And we stayed with Runa and her family for seven years. And what we experienced is, is now what I hope the world is experiencing uh, through our film on Netflix. And our hope that is that if someone can watch this film and it could lead to an understanding of what it means to be below the poverty line in India and live with a birth defect or a disability. And if that can create a better understanding of inclusion, if it can help with prevention, then I think that we really can begin a proper campaign for the to, towards the fight for the better health of the Indian child. Your response uh, was an intense as the movie. Uh, Beyond Movies, um, I believe you are also the co-creator of the Mum's Word. Uh, can you share some insights on what it is and uh, what you want to achieve through this? Uh, my colleague Akshay Shankar and I are the co-creators of the Mum's Word. And the Mum's Word is a platform on Instagram that celebrates women who tell each other the truth about motherhood. 
um, women who share what it truly means to be a mother, the mess, the vulnerability, the fun, the joys, the small wins of motherhood. And I think our aim is to create an insightful and empathetic platform for women to help each other. And, you know, we always talked about and everyone talks about how it takes a village to raise a child. But I think that Akshay and I truly believe it takes an even larger, um, you know, village to, to keep a mother up and to keep her going strong. And so if women, not just from India, but around the world can share with each other what they have gone through. And if there is an intersection and meeting point about these shared experiences, every mother will be benefit, every child will benefit, and every family will benefit. And, you know, the, the core of the issue is motherhood is, is such an incredible experience. And it is talked about so, so little. And the reason we started it is we wanted to change it. And that's how the mum's word was born. Wow, that was lovely. Uh, any special message uh, from you to people with disabilities and for their caregivers? I think that all that I can say is that I am truly honored to have been able to share the stories of so many people with complex needs, that they trusted me with it. And what we were able to witness and continue to witness is the inherent resilience of the human spirit to go beyond really insurmountable odds and to be hopeful and to be joyful and to contribute positively um, to themselves and the world. And that is something that has altered our lives. And I think my pledge um, to families with disabilities, complex needs, birth defects, and their caregivers, is that our pledge is that we will continue to do whatever we can using film and whatever platform that we can to make sure that we go on to build a more inclusive society. And I think that that's really all that I can, I can say. So uh, how do you practice inclusion in your daily life? I listen, I empathize, and I try to be the most authentic person that I can be. Hey, Pavitra, uh, let's do a short rapid fire with uh, five short questions. Came for it? Your all time favorite dish? Anything with chocolates. And um, your one personal favorite movie that you have directed? That will have to be rooting for Runa. Uh, okay. Uh, any commercial movie you would have liked to be part of? That would have to be Kung Fu Panda and um, I'm, I'm not too keen in making it. I just wanted to be the panda. A uh, new skill that you learned during the pandemic? Party training my toddler. Okay. Uh, one thing about you that Google doesn't know. Okay, so because of my love for the panda, uh, my loved ones call me Pandesh and my brother goes as far as to call me Pandumani and that Google doesn't know. Thanks a lot, Pavitra. It was such a pleasure to host you. I'm speechless, but I uh, can only say, uh, keep giving more such meaningful movies. Thank you so much, Neeraj. It was wonderful talking to you. And thank you. I'm so honored to be part of the celebration event at the India Inclusion Summit. Thank you so, so much.